G'day folks and welcome to another tutorial. So today we're going to start looking at SSE or the Streaming SIMD Extensions. Alrighty, so though shortly after MMX was introduced, uh, the race was on for floating point SIMD. Uh, AMD tried it with uh, 3D now, but uh, things didn't really work out. Uh, Intel had a better idea. Instead of supporting 3D now, they invented SSE. And SSE is really good because SSE doesn't use the uh, floating point units register space, so we don't need exit multimedia state instruction, and it uses larger registers in 3D now as well. Yeah, so it wasn't until uh, 2010 that AMD officially announced that they'd no longer be making CPUs that were 3D now capable, and I guess that's really when the race for um, floating point was won. Even the AMD CPUs all support SSE as well. Uh, yeah, it wasn't until 2010 that 3D Now was dropped. And during this time, SSE was actually growing. So SSE itself, uh, you might be referring to the original instruction set. But um, yeah, I usually use the term to mean sort of uh, just all of the SSE instruction sets collectively. And there's seven all up. And yeah, in recent years we've had a new race. So SSE is 128-bit SIMD, and AVX, which has just been introduced in 2011, is 256-bit SIMD. And no doubt, in the future we'll see 512-bit SIMD added to x86, and then 1024-bit SIMD shortly after that, etc., etc. Okay, so here's all seven of the SSE instruction sets, and sort of basically what they did or what they added. Uh, the initial one, SSE, was uh, single precision floating point instructions. Uh, SSE 2 was double precision floating point instructions and integers. I think it's most important that um, the CPU that you guys have or that you're programming is capable of both of these. SSE 1 and 2, if it can do both of these, then you can get some really good speed ups with SSE. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, you're going to be pretty limited unless you're doing single precision floating point of course. Alright, SSE 3 uh, added horizontal instructions, so that's instructions that operate within a single register. Uh, the supplemental SSE 3 instructions, or SSSE 3, uh, yeah, that's uh, just a few more horizontal instructions and that sort of thing, but Intel didn't want to make a separate instruction set, so they just called it SSSE 3. I don't really know why, but anyway, it's up to them. Uh, SSE 4.1. So SSE 4 is actually a bit confusing. It's three instruction sets itself. But SSE 4.1. Now, this wasn't included in AMD until their bulldozer chips of 2011. This is the latest uh, AMD chips. And SSE 4.1 includes uh, instructions for getting dot products, blends, min and max of integers, etc., etc. SSE 4.2 also wasn't included in AMD until Bulldozer, so this was uh, only Intel for a long time. And this is just a few more miscellaneous instructions. Uh, this last one here, SSE4A, is only in AMD chips. Intel never supported it. And it's uh, yeah, just some population counting and some other miscellaneous instructions. So that's SSE4A. And that's all seven of the SSE instruction sets. Uh, okay, so the registers, all of these instruction sets use exactly the same registers, and they're the XMM registers, or the SSE registers, I usually call them, and they're all 128 bits wide, as we've said. Uh, in the 32-bit days, there was eight of them, named XMMO through to XMM7, so you see it's exactly the same as the MMX registers, only there's an X at the start. Um, thankfully, though, in our 64-bit CPUs, uh, this has been increased to 16, and we now have XMMO through to XMM15. This gives us 256 bytes of blisteringly fast register memory on the uh, CPU. Yeah, it does, rather. Alright, so, I don't know why I put this here, but there's two sorts of floating point numbers. We've got real 4 and real 8. Uh, real 4 is called a single float, or a yeah, 32-bit floating point number. And then, of course, there's doubles. So, um, single or real 4 is uh, what C++ calls float, and double or real 8, C++ calls double. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. Ah, this is even better. So the anatomy of an XMM register, or an SSE register. So that, these are incredibly flexible, these registers. Um, yeah, let's just go through. So you can you can be using one of these SIMD registers or one of these SSE registers as eight eight bit bytes, or sorry, sixteen eight bit bytes, and we usually draw them from zero to fifteen like this, from um, right to left. Uh, you can use it as eight sixteen bit words. These are all integers, these blue ones. Uh, four 32-bit D words, just like that. Uh, we could be operating on two 64-bit Q words, just like that. And also we can do floating point instructions. So SSE 1 uh, gave us four 32-bit floating point instructions at once, SIMD style. And here's your floats here. First float over here on the right. Uh, or SSE 2 introduced double floating point precision bit instruction. Oh. Anyway, yeah, so you can do two operations on doubles, SIMD style at once. I don't know why I had so much trouble saying that. I don't even know what I wanted to say. Anyway, the other thing that you can do is uh, use these as scalar. So SSE is actually scalar and SIMD. Um, when you use scalar instructions, uh, sometimes the top is unchanged, other times it's set to zero. I mean, I've written unchanged here, but, um, whoops. Yeah, some instructions actually zero this top. Anyway, the point is that a lot of these uh, instructions, instead of uh, operating on SIMD, they also have scalar versions where only the bottom 32 or 64 bits are operated on. Good. Okay, Microsoft's X64 calling convention passes floats via the SSE registers. Um, yeah, the first four floats are passed in XMM 0, 1, 2, and 3, respectively, and any additional parameters are passed via the stack, exactly the same as 32-bit um, or 64-bit numbers or integers were passed. So only the lowest 32 or 64 bits of the SSE registers are used, and floating point values are returned in the lowest 32 or 64 bits of M, oh, sorry, XMM0. So the lowest 32 bits if you're returning a single or just a float, and the lowest 64 bits if you're returning a, a double precision float. Okay, so here's a bit of an example. When C++ calls the following function, and here's the prototype, uh, just takes three floats. Um, we'll get the values in the SSE registers as follows. So XMM0 will be A, XMM1 will be B, XMM2 will be C. Um, all of those values will be put into the lowest 32 bits of these registers. And this is pretty important too. Um, the tops will be set to zero. Alrighty? Zero extended, they say. I think they're just being lazy myself. Anyway. Uh, much the same is true for 64 bit doubles. Um, yeah, XMM 0, 1, and 2 will get A, B, and C in their lowest 64 bits, and the top will be zeroed. Beautiful. Now, okay, the fifth and subsequent floats, singles or double precision, are passed via the stack. So here we see um, six parameters being passed floats A, B, C, D, E, and F. And as per usual, uh, XMM 0, 1, 2, and 3 will get A, B, C, and D, and E and F will be passed via the stack. So E will be um, a real 4 pointer at RSP plus 5 by 8. Um, yeah, so shadow space is still made for these parameters, and we're still pushing the return address. Uh, it's exactly the same calling procedure as integers, only, um, yeah, it's floats being passed. Anyway, F will be at RSP plus 6 by 8. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, yeah, no, uh, let's just go back. Um, e and F would be at exactly these same places, even if they were doubles. If they were doubles, all you'd have to change is this to a real 8. Real 8 pointer. Good. Okay, returning floats. So C++ is going to look at the bottom of XMM0 for floating point return values. And to return a single 32-bit float, put the 
value in the lowest float of XMMO. Sorry, the lowest 32 bits of XMMO. Uh, or to return a double, you just put the value in the lowest 64 bits of XMMO. Alrighty, and this is also, this is, it's good to know this too because this is what C++ will give to us if we ask for a float to be returned. Yeah, that's good. Okay, MXCSR. SSE comes with a new control register called MXCSR. Um, multimedia Extension Control and Status Register. Pretty important sounding bloke. Not particularly useful, but anyway. Uh, or not, not useful often, we'll say. Yeah, I won't. Okay, <laughs> we can use the MXCSR register to set things like the floating point rounding function, how to handle the normals or subnormals, those are just tiny values really close to zero, and exceptions. Okay, to read or change the value of MXCSR, um, what you've got to do is put it into memory somewhere, then load that into the x86 registers, your RAX, RBX, and that sort of thing, and change the values to whatever you want and store it back in memory and load it back into the uh, MXCSR register. It's fairly long-winded and it's not quick, but that's what you've got to do. Uh, okay, so to store, you've got the STMXCSR instruction and that takes a single 32-bit memory location. And yeah, once you've changed the values in memory or in your x86 registers, uh, you can load it back into the uh, actual SSE MXCSR register by calling load MXCSR. Exactly the same as before, that takes a single parameter, which is a 32-bit memory operand. Cool. We'll go into that in more detail later, I think. Uh, anyway, so support detection. If we, if we are going to use these SSE instruction sets, we've got to know if the CPU that we're running on is uh, capable of them. So we went through an explanation of how to use the information on this slide in tutorial 39 and now I've just sort of got briefly the uh, support detection info. So if you want to know how to use this information have a look at tutorial 39. Okay, SSE 1, the original, is uh, bit 25 of EDX, so that'll be set to 1 after EAX or CPU ID function 1 is called and uh, yeah you can see the rest okay so this is interesting down here AMD only CPU ID function this is not CPU ID function 1 like these other ones um, to test for SSE 4A it's CPU extended function so it starts with an 8 over the side here in EAX alrighty CPU ID function 8 000 001 gives SSE 4A support in bit 6 of ECX. Anyway, that's about it. So next tube we'll go into some of the instructions. And um, yeah, thank you for listening. See ya.